I'm really interested in the whole idea around good, solid, reliable, consistent leads on autopilot. So um, yes, it's a, yes, it's 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 harder than it sounds, but it's definitely doable. And there's agents out there doing it. So um, I work with quite a few. So that's where that's where the whole idea for the book came from. Building a successful real estate career requires you to adapt, pivot, and constantly master new skills. We're Katie and Daniel Steinfeld. We've built our own innovative brokerage. And in this podcast, we've assembled actionable tips and strategies that you can implement to take your business to its maximum potential. It's time to level up. Level up. All right, we are now live. There you go. It's uh, the there. We were holding people at the door there. The, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's, get, it's getting messages from people saying, "When are these bouncers going to let us in the club or it?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so good stuff. Well, welcome to everybody who's here. And as you're filing in, um, we will uh, we'll take a minute to just introduce things here. But this is uh, level up. I'm Daniel. Katie's here, and today we are thrilled to be joined by uh, a longtime friend of ours. Um, and I, I feel like this is one of those radio shows where it's like, you know, like, excuse me. oh, and now I'm echoing in your screen. Sorry, there sorry. I was just making sure that you were alive. <laughs> we're yeah, but uh, no, we, we, we've uh, we've known Ray Wood for a long time since right when we started and, and we're considering um, starting our own brokerage. And uh, Ray is a, is a friend of ours, a wealth of knowledge. Um, he is the founder of Jiggler. He is the founder of Top Agents Playbook and the host of the, of the podcast there, which we're going to talk about as well. Um, this is a very timely discussion as well, because there is a new book he's coming out with. And I swear this wasn't planned, but wow, is that timely? <laughs> and that makes this, uh, if you didn't think he was a subject matter expert on sales funnels, just wait, folks. But uh, mm -hmm. Ray, uh, straight here from Australia, ex-auctioneer, realtor, wears a lot of hats, and we are lucky to have him for the next hour or so here to talk about sales funnel and all sorts of other things. Welcome to the show, Ray. That's a lovely welcome, uh, Dan and Katie. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Doing Fantastic. well. It's nice to see you. It's been a while. We've uh, had a lot of conversations over the years, but it's finally, it's great to connect well, again. It's sort of COVID was going to be a six month thing. It's like ending up a six <laughs> yeah. year thing at this so stage. True. <laughs> That's right. I'm just over it. I'm just over. I actually went to get a permit to do a building up here at the cottage. We just want to do a garage, and the local the local government's still closed because of COVID. Can you believe? Oh, wow! It? Yeah, crazy. That is crazy. That's unreal. So so no development until further notice. Then no, no. So just build it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it exactly. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just build it. Ask for what do they say? Easier to ask for forgiveness than yeah. permission. Or something. Absolutely. That's right. You yeah. And you tried to ask for permission, but if they'll disallow that, then forgiveness it is, I guess. That's right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> Plan <I love> B. <laughs> awesome. Well, Ray, your new book uh, is coming. Is it coming out or it came out already this it's, week? It's out already, Katie. It's awesome. Real Estate Funnels. Um, yep. And it's uh, how to build and grow an outrageously successful pipeline of leads, listings, and sales. And right now it's 99 cents on uh, Amazon because I'm doing wow. a pre launch nice. and I'm also including a bunch of bonuses in there, which is kind of perfect for this market. So yeah, Real Estate Funnels is the title. There it is. That's that awesome. is awesome. And and I don't care who's watching. If you can't do 99 cents right now, you've got bigger issues than your funnels. Okay. So, <laughs> and you know what, if you can't do 99 cents, then this is the best 99 cents you're going to find in the couch because you probably oh, need that yeah. book more than ever. Yeah. Well, it's, um, I, uh, I guess the term funnels has been around for a while, but um, I've kind of toyed, played around the edges with how it actually works. And and it was actually a bit of a COVID project. I got in and I, I wanted to write something on it. And and real estate funnels is, is where it is where it ended up. I'm I'm really interested in the whole idea around good, solid, reliable, consistent leads on autopilot. So um, yes, it's a yes, it's it's it's. It's harder than it sounds, but it's definitely doable. And there's agents out there doing it. So um, I work with quite a few. So that's where that's where the whole idea for the book came from. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. For those of, for those people that might not know what a funnel is, can you explain a little bit about the whole concept? Yeah, good idea, Katie. Thank you. Um, 
I, I put a funnel down. I, I, I qualified as being three things to attract, nurture, and convert. Yeah, so yeah, somebody out there in real estate land this morning um, woke up and decided to sell. So if they didn't reach out and speak to an agent who might be listening to this in their area, whether they're in Oshawa or Ottawa or Burlington or wherever they might be or Calgary, um, it can only be because there's no relationship. So I'm really interested in the very genesis of the relationship. How does that start? Thing number one. Thing number two, how do we nurture that? Because they might not be selling tomorrow. They might, might not be selling next week. They mightn't be selling for, for forever, but they might be a great referral source. So we know the way that that works. And then what do we do? Thing number three, how do we, how do we convert these packs to actual listings? How do we... So let's talk about the money. How do we bring that on board as a listing? Mm. Um, and how do, we, how do we manage that client to, to follow it through the sales? So um, yeah, contacts in the top and dollars at the bottom. That's how my funnel works. I like that kind of that's, funnel. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, that, that, that's the image on the cover, isn't it? There's dollars yeah. coming out the bottom of the yeah. funnel there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. So that's it. So it, yeah. So, so a good, so we're talking like different, just to get into it quickly, but what are the different lead generators that are working out there in your market? What are people looking for? I, I think, and, and this really hasn't changed, I think every property seller is looking for three things. They're looking for a top market price, obviously. Uh, I think they're looking for a sale in a reasonable time uh, and they're looking for a great real estate experience. So I believe if your marketing can, can succinctly package that up and offer it and put it out there, uh, I think that that's where most of the heavy lifting is done. And you just, and there's a, a whole lot of other things that, you know, client testimonials and reviews and that sort of thing. But I think that goes a long way to, to like setting that whole initial thing up. So, so we can, we can start to have these relationships. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so really, I mean, this is, this is every customer we work with is on a journey already. I think a lot of us, it's really it, or I, I don't want to assume, but for, for most of us, it becomes a convoluted thing or we don't give enough thought to how we're doing it and exactly what goes into that journey. I think the, yeah. historically, we were talking before, before uh, we started here, like the phone would ring, things were coming to us, right? It was a lot easier. Um, and for people who haven't been in the business a while, that might be a good chunk of what they know is that the phone will ring, I'll get the deal and then on to the next one, right? But um, as and if things get more difficult or more competitive, there needs to be a little bit more of a definition, I think, to what that journey looks like. And yeah. so high level, like what, what, what should a journey be or what sort of, of thinking should agents have that maybe, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but in terms of mindset into going into this, what is it that people should be thinking about how to put this together? Yeah, really good question. I, I think, and I've been thinking about this a lot for the last I don't know, six or 12 months or since, since the foot came off the gas with the, with the number, you know, the volume of sales. And we were talking before we press record, Katie, and I think you said, you know, like overall in the GTA, I think you took a stab at something like volume of listings down 20 or 30%, whatever yeah. it might be. I mean, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, that, that makes a big difference. Um, I, I think that, and I'm probably not giving anybody any news here, but um, a lot of real estate agents are looking for, you know, where should I be spending my time? In, in, in real estate, our time is currency. Currency is our time. So how mm. are we using our time? I think a lot of agents fall for the trap. I, get, I call it getting stuck in the thick of thin things. And they're not, what they're doing to is actually not leading toward a result. So um, I think the big opportunity at the moment is to really focus on the, the, the quantity of your relationships uh, and the quality of your relationships. And I speak to agents who've been in real estate for three, four, five years who have only got a couple of hundred contacts. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, they mightn't have needed a volume of contacts back in the day when listings were kind of falling out of trees and everybody was selling and the market was on fire and you'd, you'd list something and you wouldn't be that optimistic about the price. And suddenly by the time you got it to market, you got a bidding war going on. There's more and more people. So the market just kind of rose at the moment, things are reversed. So, yeah. um, and I've proven many times, and I'm sure you guys would agree with this, but the amount of money, let's just, let's just bring it down to dollars and, and cents for a sec. The amount of money that, that somebody can make in real estate, I believe is, is, is a, there's a specific correlation between 
their income and the number of contacts. So mm. does the person who has a thousand contacts, are they going to make twice as much as somebody who has 500 contacts? I'd say they probably would. Um, the What I call the super agents out there at the moment, the agents who would... So first thing is is volume of relationships. What am I doing to attract more people into my business? I think the second thing is how are we going about that? If all of our relationship is real estate based, um, that's difficult because um, if, 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 and here, here again, I don't have any evidence to, to back this up, but I think I'm probably right, anecdotally anyway. I think there's probably only four or 5% of people that are actively buying or selling real estate in any one area at any one time. So if all of our marketing is all real estate and recent sales, and here's a sale and here's a listing, if it's all about real estate, I think we're alienating 95% of our market. So mm. um, why wouldn't we talking, be talking about that brand new cafe in Waterloo or Burlington or wherever it might be, or doing business partnerships with people that are not specifically related to real estate, but they may be in some in some ways, like mortgage brokers and a mortgage broker and a, and a real estate agent is a match made in heaven. That's the Lennon and McCartney of our industry. I mean, that's what that's that's what really needs to happen. The, the, these relationships that you can make, because you're not really competing, but but you've both got the same kind of market. So that's a great relationship. And if you can get the word out about what it is that you're doing and that your your community focus, that's where you can become something more like a local influencer. And you're kind of, you're getting a bit of notoriety and publicity um, almost through, because you're rubbing shoulders with these other people. I mean, you could do, you know, why wouldn't you, um, why wouldn't you talk to the local member in your area? So mm -hmm. That's a really important point in what you said about you're alienating the majority of your audience because most of them aren't thinking of buying or selling at this point. That's so true. And to think where I get a lot of my clients, it comes from the content I put out about my family or what I enjoy doing as a hobby. It's not about the new listing that I just put out. So I, I really think that's a good point and something to keep in mind for everybody. Um, in terms of that attraction piece, I think a lot of people often wonder, how do I, there's so much noise out there, so many different ways. And so how do you as an agent determine the best way to attract clients and get them into your funnel? Um, I'd be focusing on a specific geographic area for a okay. start. Um, and I think 2,500 is a good number. If I was an agent, say, I don't know, Guelph, Ontario, I'd be picking a patch um, of 2,500 where there's reasonably high turnover. So in every city or town in the province or the country, there's going to be those high volume areas. Um, I call it Nappy Valley, right? So there's there's good turnover, there's growing families, people are moving. Um, I'd be focusing on on those areas, and I'd be really reaching out to to buyers in this market because it's a fabulous opportunity for people to upgrade. People are also downsizing as well, um, and. Uh, the, the psyche is a little bit different. If you're trying to make a pitch to attract a seller, you're talking about selling a service. So it's a different pitch, right? I'm a, I'm a real estate agent. I'm selling a service. Um, if I'm, if I'm a, trying to attract buyers, I'm a real estate agent and I can offer a property. So I'd be really marketing my properties re really heavily on social. I'd be doing, um, if I'm doing opens on the weekend, I'd be, I'd be promoting them. Um, probably without an address specifically, I'd be using really good quality photos because I really want that phone. I, I want that phone call. I want that person because um, my stats are, are 25 to 30% of buyers are actually sellers. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to have that fishing line in the water as well when we're, when we're out there trying to attract people. Um, another, another thing that I'm a big fan of is, is your is your local traders and contractors in, in your area? I mean, everybody listening to this has probably got a an iPhone full of of. Um, so we had to we had to reinvent um, ourselves and we had to really go back to back to basics and and it was it was the opportunity to speak to people and to help people out and people in business whether they're dog walkers or architects or builders or whatever. They're all looking for leads, especially at the moment, because their volume's down as well. It's not just us. So they're yeah. looking for fresh ideas. So any way that you can cast a net and bring these people into your field and help them um, and promote them, 
Uh, and you guys are pretty good at doing that. I mean, your model has been great. You're not just sort of all real estate. You're doing different things. And I think when people can see that you're not just a real estate agent, you're a family um, and you're a community-minded person, I think that helps as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, social's been terrific. Social media's been terrific for that. But at the end of the day, no matter how many followers we have on a post on, on social, I don't own that. I don't have Katie and I don't have Katie's email address. So I need to look for ways that I can bring her into my database so I can, I can make a connection with her. The other thing on that is that I think a lot of people think that email is, is dead. Um, I don't think it's dead. I think it's dead boring. So uh, I think, uh, you know, like we, we've got the opportunity to be ourselves a little bit and, and put it out there. They don't need to be long messages, but they just need to be engaging. And that's really, that's really what I think a good email is all about. So and it's, and it's, you know, basically free for us to communicate with people if we're emailing. So um, that's, that's a great feature. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think you touched on a lot of things there, but we're in a unique market now where it's been changing rapidly. Like it's always changing. You could tell, you could ask an agent or anybody at any time, how's the real estate market? And someone will say, oh, it's crazy. Oh, it's weird. Yeah. But yeah. this is a special kind of crazy the last couple of years. And with that have come, I think too many people are looking at the difficulty of that and how things have gotten harder, but can you yep. speak to the, the opportunity that this is presenting for people and where those opportunities lie from taking advantage of a changing market um, yep. for all these agents, like we've got 80,000 realtors just in Ontario. Right. Yep. And you know, a, a lot of them are not holding much, if any market share, but I think there's the opportunity for them to grow it. So can you speak to where that opportunity is now with the way things are moving? As, as far as attracting listings or as a far yeah, as I, sales? I, I, or? Well, I think just growing their market share, like, like what, what you've been talking about in terms of building relationships and, yeah. and how people can take advantage of, it's not always necessarily talking about how great things are, right? No. But there's there's opportunities that go beyond that when you're not just focused on, here's my latest listing. Yeah, Dan, I think the best thing that anybody in real estate can do at the moment is really, if they don't have one, they need to get one. If they've got one, they need to enhance it, is their reputation for results. Mm. Because if I'm thinking of selling, um, I mean, Blind Freddy can see that the market's not booming and prices are down and, and you know, it may be down 10, 15% on what it was this time last year, depending on where it is and what it is. So um, I want to be known as the man or woman that can get those results if, if, I'm, if I'm in real estate. So what's the best way to do that? I think the best way to do that is with a solid list of, of good client testimonials and good client reviews good client videos. So instead of when you sell that property, instead of just getting a photo uh, with the buyer in front of there, have somebody take it and get a video of that person doing it um, and making that connection. Um, the, the other thing, and I'll mention this, um, giving away all my secret sauce here, but people probably are, already <laughs> know this. Um, YouTube is big and getting bigger. And I kind of think I don't really know. I, I think Facebook is a little bit lost at the moment. Um, but that's my own view. Um, uh, we could do a video on Facebook and we can pay to promote it. But in 10 days, it's dead and gone. Um, if I did a video about 10 things I must know or 10 things um, you must know before buying a house in Ajax or in Toronto or in Hamilton or wherever it might be, um, that's going to be there in 10 years. And that's the sort of information that people are looking for. And it's free. The other thing, obviously, with um, Google and YouTube being under the one roof, they're sharing the same algorithm. So these search terms that are going into Google are also going into YouTube and vice versa. So I'd be building a great, um, a great uh, following on my Facebook channel uh, as well. There's a guy, um, I've forgotten his name, um, but if you search realtors in Dallas, Texas, I'll have a look while we're talking and, and see if I can find it. Um, I've, I've done an interview with him on, on my podcast, but he has created a pretty amazing business by putting these videos out there. And he talks about, um, he talks about 
uh, a, a, a suburb in Dallas where people want to be. And he's like, I think he's done three or four different suburbs in Dallas. And if you're, a, if you're a realtor in the GTA, you could do that. You could practice. I was talking about your patch before. I mean, get to really know your patch. Um, but with, with your iPhone nowadays, you can just take a great selfie video and then yeah. post it. And then it's out there working for you around the clock. So that would definitely be one of, and it's, and it's, apart from your time to do it, it's free. You can promote it on YouTube if you want. You can run an ad. Um, but yeah. they're the kind of titles that people will be looking for, things you must know, um, you know, like, okay, best schools in the GTA. Mm -hmm. right. um, another thing that works really well is, is the highest crime areas. People just love watching that. It gets a lot of, it gets a lot of traffic. Yeah. So um, pick, pick, pick those titles that, uh, that are going to give you some traffic. Um, and also make sure you've got, 15 or 20 sizzling client testimonials. And, um, and just on the testimonial side of things, you want to be able to have a great testimonial that says, you, you don't want something that's saying, oh, Dan and Katie were very helpful. Thanks for your help. Um, you, 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 you want something that says, um, dealing with Daniel and Katie was a life-changing experience. We couldn't believe the result we got. We don't know how they were able to control all of these buyers. Um, all of, our, all of our friends think you did an amazing job, five stars. So you're looking for, you're looking for the, that kind of review that really takes things over can the time. You, can you leave that one for us when we're done on this? Take it, it's yours. I, I'm, t I'm taking notes. I'm going to have to plant that somewhere. Yeah, take it, it's yours. I think I, talk, I, think I give away um, some bonuses on that. So if you buy the book for 99 cents, I'll, uh, I'll show you how to get great reviews. No, I thought awesome. you were going to say you'll leave a review for everybody who buys the book. <laughs> well, you got to be careful. You can't. You yeah, can't be it yeah. because the, yeah, no, no. The, the 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 karma the karma gods will come back and uh, and smack you up up behind the head. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Don't do that. Everyone who's watching, we're joking. We're joking. Yeah. No, well, that's so true about reviews, though, especially on Google, because anybody, if you're looking for a professional to work with, whether it's a handyman or a plumber or an electrician or a real estate agent, like the first place I go is Google and I yep. look through all the reviews and if they're not well rated, there's yep. no way I'm going to think twice about them. Or That's if it's right. a referral, it supports the referral and allows people to see, okay, it's not just this person. There's, you know, hundreds or 50 or however many reviews you have other people that think the same thing. So that's, that's super important. Um, I often wonder, I find the nurturing piece can be the most challenging for us um, because it requires consistency. And I think there are so many ideas out there for us as real estate agents. We're constantly being thrown in all sorts of different directions. So it's really hard to have a focus and have a consistent strategy when it comes to nurturing our clients. So can you talk a little bit about that and kind of give us some tips on how to develop a really strong strategy that will kind of serve the test of time? Yes, I can, Katie. And my the, the, the heading for that would be always be giving. Mm. Um, and I'm, again, I'm a big fan of email. Uh, and if I'm, if I'm doing a, uh, ultimately, if I want to speak to somebody, if I've got a list of VIP sellers, so let's say I've got a thousand contacts and I know that on, on that list is, is 50 potential sellers that are probably going to be doing something in the next 12 months. I'm going to want to itemize that. I'd call it my VIP list because mm -hmm. um, they're, they're the people that they're, that's my bread and butter. They're, so they're going to give me my income for the next, for the next year, right? So um, I, you know, if I've got 50 potential, potential sellers there, that's, that's, that's a sale a week. I really want to be focusing on that. So, so for those guys, I'd be putting out some really good emails that say, um, something like it might be Sam can't wait to meet you. And Sam could be the guy that makes an awesome on the real estate side of things. I'd be doing a headline in my email that says um, the neighbors can't believe this price or something like that. So it mightn't be one of your sales, but it might be a recent sale. You don't need to mention your competitor's name, but you might want to say, Hey, just a courtesy um, to let you know that, uh, 123 Smith Street, Toronto, sold for 1.3 or whatever it might be. So um, mm. I, I also like um, if you can use a follow-up with text as well. A lot of the CRMs have have great bulk test fe uh, text features now or SMS. So mm. um, I can send a text out to a 1,000 people and I can say, hi, Katie, hi, Dan, hi, Fred, hi, Bill, whatever it might be, and 
it's kind of a personalized message. Now they know it's probably generalized, but you can put a short, sharp message in there and you can keep them posted about stuff that's going on. And it might be something that, I mean, we attract people into our lives when we're interested in stuff. Um, I mean, I have a cottage up here on the lake and I kind of, I find that more and more I'm talking to other people that have cottages and, and it just seems to be a thing. You know, other people are into bike riding or jujitsu or, or, or running or, or whatever it might be. Um, so we kind of attract these other people into our lives because we sort of, we sort of develop this kind of expert expertise through, through some of the stuff that we do. So um, I'd be using that as well. And just, and just like um, I'd be getting a solid email out to my list once a week and if somebody unsubscribes, they unsubscribe. It's their loss. Yes. We we yeah. can't. Not not everybody is going to love us, uh, and it's and it's up to them. But the more relevant and the more engaging that content can be, and if it's not, again, I say it's not all real estateish, um, then I think we've got a better chance to to bring those people into our world and have the opportunity to uh, to do some business down the line. That's great. That that's really true in the sense that uh, I think twofold. One is people need to know what sort of content they're getting out there. And I think when you've got a system that's got some sort of thing to it, it helps with them. But on the other side of things, it's we're all different people in terms of our own personality and the value we bring to the table as individuals. And so yeah. from, from what you've seen and in building this, like let's say it's a system you're building that nurtures people when they're in the funnel. How much would you tell people in addition to just building in non-real estate stuff, building yeah. in their personality in the text and in the delivery. And if it's video, you know, staying away from the generic, generic robotic approach to things and starting to actually show people who you are so that yeah. they can get to know you as well. Yeah. Um, how would I go about it? Well, would, would you say that that is an important element to the nurturing side of things? Or is it more about just keeping the content going or personality? I guess, as an element to the nurturing. Yeah, um, I'd probably look to, to video to do the heavy lifting there because it's, it's so much more engaging and, and, and there's more and more of our market who, who will invest the time to look at a video if, if they feel the value proposition is there. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a million topics that um, I, I, nearly thought of that, I nearly thought of that Texan's name. <laughs> I should look it up here. I'm sure he'll yeah, come up. I'll, I'll, I'll find it because I want to tell everybody before it's gone because it's worth checking out. But yeah. um, he really brought it home the power of video because it was interesting. I, I did a I did a search and then his name came up, and because um, uh, I I got the feeling this is about six months ago that video was big and getting bigger and bigger, um, and people don't really like to put themselves out there, but I figure why not. So, you know, we're not, we're, we're, we're not all glamorous or, or whatever, but, you know, I, I feel that, I feel that we've got something, if we've got some expertise in place, we've got something that we, we can bring to the table. And um, I kind of think that my attitude is that, you know, if, if I know something about my area, I kind of feel like I've got a moral obligation to pass that on. I don't feel like I'm boring people. I feel like I'm really genuinely sharing it and bringing them into, into my world. And I, I think this is stuff that they need to know. So, you know, there might be something important happening in your area. There's, there's stuff going on. If you look at Mississauga at the moment, there's, my gosh, the building going on there is, is, is crazy. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to affect, it's going to affect, you know, it's the, I think it's the sixth or seventh biggest city in the country. It's going to affect so many people. So if mm -hmm. I was an agent in Mississauga, I'd be talking a little bit about that. Some of the growth, some of the new businesses that are coming up, some of the mm -hmm. purchasing opportunities, are you upsizing, downsizing? Yep. And, and everybody can just, you know, execute and, and make it their own. And I think that's really important. And, and also the imposter syndrome with video. I don't know if you, you ever talk to agents about that, but I feel like a lot of agents have that, like they see everybody else that's out there. Maybe there's people that are more glamorous than them, more well-spoken than them. But at the end of the day, if you don't just take that approach of like putting yourself out there, as you said, like, why not? Yep. What are you going to lose? If you don't, do it, then people won't actually know who you are. So yeah. you're really not really losing much if you put out a video that you might think is cringy, but there's probably a lot of people out there that don't think that and find it very useful. Yeah. I, I think there's, 
there's a lot of people that really struggle that that don't want to go down there. They're at the yeah. end of the day, they're probably introverts. And I guess an introvert can do more than a sale a month. I don't know, but it's tough. Um, it's 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 pretty difficult. You you really do need to put your personality out there because most of your competitors are, are doing exactly the same thing as well. So um, yeah, I can and, see and it and where people are the same. And so where again, Dan? And we're, we're a people business. Like our business is built on relationships. I get that there's people who are introverts and, and you know, it's all about the real estate for them, but that's a very small percentage of us. And I think those of us that, you know, got into this because we like helping people or we enjoy building relationships. I mean, yep. I get that getting in front of a camera and we speak to a lot of our people lot, ourselves. Like we look back at the videos we started doing when we first got into this. Our One of our first videos was with you, I remember yep. years yep. ago. And uh, granted that was an okay video, thanks to you yep. being in it. But <laughs> I mean- You saved us. <laughs> but, I think you're being kind. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you, you don't get better if you don't jump in head first. No. And, and like you said, I mean, I think we're, we're our own worst critics there. Yeah. So just doing it, putting it out there. There is a, the nice benefit, like YouTube, I agree, the evergreen, the it's always there element of it is fantastic. Yeah. But there's also the element of when we do things like stories that disappear after 24 hours, you know, if you want to make a video that you're not the proudest of, but you want to get it out there and do it, okay, put it up and, and you don't have to be nervous about it, yeah. <laughs> right? 24 yeah. hours later. I think, yeah. um, I think people people warm to a little bit of vulnerability. If they can see somebody's a little bit nervous, then, then this is the way I think anyway. I'm sure you guys do as well. But, but I kind of think to myself, you know, good honor. She's out there having a go and it's like, who wants to make their first video and it <laughs> might be a bit cringeworthy, but, but good honor for doing it. I, I support it. And she's, you know, she's all in with it. So right. I kind of like that. And I also think that when you do a, when you do a video, um, and, and you put it out there, you're giving people a bit of a glimpse as to what they can expect when they start working with you, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, there's, this, is how, this is how this person um, speaks. This is how they sound. Um, this is a bit of an insight as to what this relationship's going to be like. You know, do I, am I warming to this person? Um, that kind of thing. So you, you're putting yourself out there, I think, in the best way that, that you possibly can. I didn't, I didn't really expect that this, this session would turn into a talk about video <laughs> marketing, but you know what? It's so powerful and it's, and it's virtually free. So why wouldn't yeah. you be jumping in and doing it? Yeah. Well, I can tell you that when we did our interview, our video, um, I, I was, it was one of my first ones and we did a great chat. Greg was amazing. We were, had an auction property and he was so awesome at just bringing so much attention to the auction concept. And I was literally sweating. Like I remember like after we pressed stop, like it was just like, it was disgusting. I was so nervous, <laughs> but it worked and you just keep doing it and it just gets easier. So um, I encourage everybody, you're, you start you're somewhere. A, you're a good example. And I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you're, <laughs> you're a bit of a, you're a bit of a mis, mis perfectionist. You love every, everything to be so right. You mm -hmm. love to be, to be right. And, yeah. and doing a video is a, is very, sorry, converting is very challenging, I think, yeah. for a lot of people. I think there's the old school salespeople who have their scripts and their ways of converting. And then you've got a lot of new agents coming in who despise yeah. all of that. Yeah. And you've got consumers in the middle that are kind of like, they're very smart. They're very aware of the different ways that people, you know, talk them into a sale. So can you talk a little bit about the conversion piece and how to come across as authentic and how it can how to make it work for you and actually convert people. Yes, yes. And this is the, the I love the attract and I love the, I love the convert. I accept that nurture is a, is, is a part of the process, but um, I, I, do love, I do love the conversion. Um, conversion is in the form I mentioned before about client testimonials. So they're already thinking about using you. Um, so then imagine if they're exposed to written testimonials, written reviews, you know, a bunch of good videos on your video channel with, with former clients, because that's the way people think. And when they're at that, um, like, okay, I say again, somebody woke up this morning and decided to sell. If you're on that list, right, you might be one or one of three or four. They say in the States that um, the average property owner knows more, knows over 10 agents. 
Mm. So it's it's a pretty crowded space, probably courtesy of the of the boom market. But yeah. when somebody's thinking like that, um, they're on the cusp of making a decision. And buyer psychology, and again, we, we've got this love of reviews. Amazon taught us how to how to love reviews and use reviews, right? Because we're going okay be, before I click to buy that, I just want to make sure that that's a really good product and it's not dodgy. It's kind mm. of the same with our service. So um, you've got to have your client reviews ready to go. So conversion is, here's how a conversion email might go. Um, it might say, are you around next week, Katie? That could be the headline, right? In the, mm -hmm. in the subject line. And hi, Katie. Um, I'm looking, um, hi, Katie. I'm just doing this off the cuff. Um, I've set aside next week to give, uh, give some of my clients a market update or a current market update on the value of their property. Um, I'll probably be in your area Thursday or Friday. Does that work? If not, let me know, mm. right? Regards, Ray. And underneath that, I'm going to have, I might have a link to a, a client testimonial or I might have a written testimonial. So that's kind of a conversion email. You're giving people a reason. So they're, they're at that point or would they like an update or, hey, um, I've just updated my contractors list. Right? I used to call it raised list and I'd have like 80 or 100 different people on there. Would mm. you, if, if you're contemplating, if you're doing some preparation soon, would you like me to send you the PDF or a download of my, of my contractors list, con contractors and trades people? Uh, there's mm. a bunch of people here. I can guarantee you they're all competitive uh, and they come with my recommendation, et cetera. Just mention my name and you get the red carpet treatment, that kind of thing. Um, that's a conversion strategy. Now, the second part of the conversion strategy, and this is where the rubber hits the road, and this is what I love, is a red hot pre-listing kit and listing presentation. And I could mm -hmm. speak for the next day on, on, on that, but essentially that needs to be something that's going to pre-sell you, your listing presentation, uh, your pre-listing kit, and your listing presentation when you actually, when you actually meet with the seller. Because here's the thing. If your, if your fee is, say, 10 grand, so if you go to a listing presentation tomorrow, let's say you're, like, let's just use for example, I mean, it's been, it's been way higher than that in the GTA lately, but let's, let's just call it 10 grand. So if you win that listing, you're probably going to make the sale, right? Mm -hmm. You win the listing, you make the sale. Chances are in the next 6, 12, 18 months, you're going to list two, another couple of properties in the area. So that, that 10,000 is suddenly 30,000, right? So uh, conversely, if you miss it, if you miss the gig, you don't get the listing and you don't get the sale, um, you've, just, you've just sponsored one of your competitors for 30000 So, mm. um, you know, people, I'm amazed people don't have a, a better pre-listing kit. It should be a digital and a physical, right? Because if, you're, if your strike rate at a, at, a, at a listing presentation is, say, 50%, so you, you list five out of the 10 that you go to, if you can increase just that just by one, um, that's going to do amazing things to your numbers over a, over a twelve month period. So, oh yeah. So that's my that's my conversion. Like great reviews, um, mm -hmm. including video. And you see, see these these testimonials are, are awesome. I'm, I mean, I, I like to say, you know, what am I? I'm free. Um, I'm but I'm priceless and I last forever. It's a client review. Mm. <laughs> It's so true. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I, I, I know for those of you watching on video, I've been like sporadically disappearing and freezing here, but I, I am the reason I'm looking to my left is I can see it's working on my phone. So I'm watching the live stream when I'm not on our live stream here. So I'm keeping up. Um, <laughs> but you're, when, when it comes to conversion, uh, where are your thoughts on, I mean, first and foremost, you want to make sure you have a seat at the table, I think is kind of the base thing. You don't want to be left out. If someone knows 10 agents, you don't want them calling seven and you're one of the ones they didn't choose. Yep. Is the approach that you've got, because what you're talking about here, these are really good tools people can use to get ahead of it with people who might be thinking about it, right? So in an ideal world, are you trying to get to these people and almost show them that they want to sell and they'll call you? Or are you just trying to ensure that when they think about it, you're one of those names that's top of mind for them? I just want to, I want to be on the list, Dan. Um, okay. I, so I'm, I mean, as, as persuasive as we all might be, we're not going to list somebody that doesn't really want to sell. And, and you know, okay, in, in a booming market, you could probably get away with it because they might get their price, but not so much at the moment. 
Um, so no, we, we're not going to convert un, unmotivated sellers, but as, as, as just staying top of mind. So um, if, if I, so I talked about that VIP list of, of 50 people before. Um, mm-hmm. If they're selling, I'd be sending them a snapping fresh direct mail letter, like a hard mail letter um, uh, every, you know, like every other month. Mm-hmm. And just to give them a quick update, say, hi, just checking in. Um, here's some sales in the area that you may or may not have seen. Um, I'm, go- I'm around next week if you want a market update. Just short and sharp and sweet. Um, the biggest problem, a biggest communication problem um, for us with email is getting our message open, right? But if you send, if I sent you guys a letter and it didn't have my logo all over it, and it might even be a handwritten address, chances are you're going to open it and you're going to see mm-hmm. my message, right? Yeah. So I'd definitely be making direct mail a big part of my, of my approach as well. Um, mm-hmm. So direct mail, you know, text messages, um, the open rate's not as good as it, as it used to be, but it's still pretty good. Email and then just phone follow-up. So if I was doing a campaign, so for example, um, I've got some clients in Australia, so it's coming into the summer market now, sort of winter's behind us. So um, it's, the, it's the sort of falls behind us. We're coming into, into October, November. Um, so um, I'd be sort of saying, hey, this is, the, this is the spring, sorry, I meant to say spring. This is the spring selling season, okay, because our markets are reversed. Um, mm-hmm. Need an update? Let's go. Like This, this is a reason why, why they should be getting on board. Um, here's, here's some of the things that we can offer. Um, we, do a, we do a campaign at Best Agents. We do a campaign called a price drive. So with the price drive, that's a campaign that you hit pretty solidly. You do a two-week lead up, then you hit it for the second two weeks with your flyers and your social media marketing. And um, those campaigns are very successful for, for letting people know in your market that you are real estate agents, you're open for business, and you're getting results. That's what people are looking for. By and large, consumers, and again, this is where the, the uh, Amazon review thing is so popular. By and large, consumers will go with together, but having that whole campaign set out ahead of time, planned out, and you're just hitting people over and over with that consistency is really important. Yeah. It works really well. Um, hey, what that I love- guy's, that yeah. guy's name is Levi Lassick. Ali, okay. the guy. Um, can I send? I'll just send you the link to my podcast, and you can, if you want to put it in the show notes or whatever, or yeah, or yeah. It on, you can. But um, he gave so much away on that interview, and mm-hmm. um, it could be worth you guys reaching out to him as well because uh, he's he's. Uh, I think he's one of the better better YouTube marketers in in our industry out there at the moment. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I, I, I want to build on on what you were talking about there with kind of the, the scheduled stuff that's going to, go, going to go out as you're trying to convert people. Do you, do you first qualify your funnel to, to cut it down a bit to a list of people who are more deserving of the harder conversion stuff? Or do you send out the conversion stuff to the whole funnel and just see who responds? Um, I, I do a mixture right at the moment. Um, you, you'd have to argue at the moment, Dan, that this market has the potential to fall further. Mm-hmm. You agree? Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, it, I do. It, it, it may not, but it may, right? So to my whole list at the moment, I'd be sending a, a series of emails, say, that says, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big on the subject line. Let, let me just think of the subject line. Um, uh, um, is it yeah, call well, Daniel and Katie to sell your house? That's what it, it is, right? Be, it could be something like that. Um, the, 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 I, I, I'll, it'll come to me, but... My message would be, um, hi, Dan and Katie, uh, if you're looking at selling in the next 12 months, there's some pretty important stuff you need to know right now. Mm-hmm. Call or text me on bang. All mm-hmm. right, leave, leave a little bit of a lure there. And my message is, hey, we're just coming off the end of a 30-year boom. This might be ugly. If you don't need to sell, you don't need to sell. But if you're thinking about it, I'd love to get you on my radar because there's some, you know, we might have to make some quick decisions, et cetera. So mm-hmm. yeah. there's huge opportunities in this market. I mean, Absolutely. if you, like the people, the family that wants to, that wanted to upsize that, that couldn't buy that home, that, that home that they wanted to buy now might be two or $300,000 less. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. there's some massive opportunities in this market and, and um, you know how in the stock market people short sell? They actually bet that a price is going to fall, mm-hmm. that, a, that a stock stock price is going to fall. Yeah. Um, 
it's the same thing for us. So there's 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 some great marketing to be done in a tough market. It's just that we haven't had to do it for so long, so people aren't sure what to do. But there's a lot of good news out there um, if you want to do it. I mean, goodness, um, I don't care if rates double at the moment. It's still cheap. It's still cheap money. Right. So you can get in and buy the home home that you want, you know, and these these belly-to-belly -belly discussions with people say, look, why don't you live where you want to live rather than where you have to live? You've been wanting to make this change. Now's a really good time. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people need, need not pushy, sometimes people need this professional guidance and advice to help them get where they want to get. Mm -hmm. So that makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah we, definitely. We, we find it's it's almost a reminder people need when when a year or two ago they told us what they wanted but it couldn't be done and now it can yeah they, they need to almost be told hey remember remember what we were talking about now could very well be the time yeah and yeah. and yeah without without it it is a bit of a push but you're right it's not it's not uh like persuasion in a negative sense it's just yeah. it's us being professionals and and being yeah. aware of what's happening out there I didn't mention, I, I forgot to mention down, I probably went off on a tangent, but if you're doing this follow-up, I like to email and then text. And I do that. I'd send an email out Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are always good days for email. Later in the week, they just get lost. Mm -hmm. So I'd send an email Monday, Tuesday. Um, I'd probably send a follow-up text on the Friday or the following Monday. Then, and this is where most agents miss out because they're scaredy cats, I jump <laughs> on the phone. So, yeah. Hi, Katie. Um, and I, I really liked what you said about the subject line of emails. A lot of times we're talking, uh, the, you know, a lot of people say the YouTube title or, you know, that is so important. So I really equate that to the email. And if you have a really good subject line, that's what's going to increase your open rate. So that's really something yeah. to keep in mind. Yeah. There, there needs to be some allure. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the best emails I ever did out to my real estate real estate clients was um, I think the subject line was pray your competitor pray your competitors don't open this email. <laughs> uh, all I want to do is get my message open. Yeah. Uh, so if I can get my message open, then I got the opportunity to communicate. So um, yeah. So yeah, you can have some fun with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, um, I, I don't think anybody has any questions in the Facebook group, but make sure to get Ray's book um, because it's really, it has a lot of great information in it. I love the fact that you've got real ideas and scripts on like, you can, you can literally just implement like plug and play, just take it and use it for your own um, database and your own funnels. Um, and the other thing that's in there that I think is really great is you have um, the 17 marketing mistakes holding agents back. And that's yep. a really, really great, like read. Um, and, and a lot of that is really um, just stuff that I think everybody needs to know about. So that's Thanks, Katie. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've kind of over delivered with this a little bit, but I just, I'm so passionate about the funnel and I've, I've seen so much evidence agents like around the world, specifically Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, but the agents that get their funnel formula, right. Mm -hmm. Um, are doing very very well, and you guys are doing a fabulous job with it. With it as well, you're bringing so many people into your sphere. It's inspirational. Um, and if if you can do that, you don't need to have thirty funnels out there. Just start with one, and then yeah. test it against another one. Um, you know, like I talked about the the cost effectiveness of of using YouTube. You can you can link that to a to a funnel and just bring people into your world. Um, it it might be a year or three before they're actually doing anything, but you know to T today's leads are tomorrow's listings i like to say definitely well that's it just keep filling it at the top there and eventually that cash will come out the bottom it's got to be consistent numbers, eh? <laughs> that's right yep. that's right so make sure to check out ray's book we'll link to it in the show notes and we'll put it on the facebook group as well on amazon as he said it's only 99 cents right now so why not <laughs> it's Absolute a fabulous bargain. book <laughs> <laughs> best bargain I've heard <laughs> so um yeah check it out and uh we'll make sure to also connect you to uh, Ray's podcast which is a great um great source as well for information and uh yeah thank you so much for coming on we appreciate it my pleasure lovely to chat congrats on your success you guys are inspirational um uh just love hooking up with you we don't do it often enough so uh yeah. so thanks so much for your time and and, and your input awesome thank thanks, you Ray. Ray appreciate thank it you. Take care. Never,
level up, 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 level